two of them. I think we're all out. One more thing. Is that good joke? And it's about to go out. Okay, good. So we have a nice, uh, nice result here. I'll take this out of here, and I'll hook this up so that we can get more gas. I think this is coming from, yeah, this is coming from outside. So let's put that in there. And this one should also be producing. I think this bag has a leak in it. As if I go, where's your lighter? Yeah, I can take a picture of that. Let's go. <laughs> should I do it again so it's bigger? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, there's. I have a pump, an electric pump I can use that I bring around. So yeah, so you've had your first experience with biogas. That's good fun. So I guess this bag does have a. Oh, it's falling apart. Yeah, you know, this thing has got to be tightened some other time. We don't have time this class to tighten it, so we're just losing gas. But isn't that interesting that I can come in here with an empty? Like gas is just spewing up here. No toxic effects. No explosion. Try that with hydrogen or gasoline. It's going to happen. Right. I'll fix that later on. Um, what else can I describe to you in here? This is just an IBC tank, an international bulk container. This was the feeding pipe where the food went down. The gas used to come out here and the fertilizer here. Then we did a revision where we put a pipe here, a pipe there, and a pipe in the middle to make it easier. Uh, and you want it so it wouldn't clog. We've done a lot of experimenting here at Mercy College, and now that this model is the way it is, we've exported it all over the world, and you'll see that there's thousands of people using them. So we should be proud of Mercy and the students. And uh, the other thing I was going to show you is this. I claim this is the most important technology for environmental sustainability of the 21st century. Do you know what it is? Would it help if I went, if I went like that? Now do you know what it is? Toilet? No. A grater? Like a garbage disposal? Garbage disposal. The garbage disposal is the one thing that you can do to make a huge difference right now if you're really concerned about preserving our civilization and preserving wildlife. The garbage disposal grinds stuff up like teeth and jaws and makes organic waste suddenly small enough that microbes and worms and insects can have, it, can have at it quick enough so they can go back into the ecosystem. When you throw garbage out and it's not ground up, it takes the fungi and the insects and the worms so long to break it down that it causes pollution. And usually it takes compost three to six months to make decent compost, right? I don't know. Gosh, in the winter it doesn't work. So people, they tell you, you can't put cooked food in, and you can't put meat, and you can't put uh, citrus, and all this sort of stuff they tell you about compost. Actually, you can put anything you want to in compost. We even put Christmas trees and turkeys in it. Everything goes in compost. But the city's <laughs> worried that raccoons and rats will get it because it's not ground down. When you grind it, the rats have no interest. The flies have very little interest at all if they can even find it. So you can use one of these as a compost companion. Grind it from your sink into a bucket or put a bucket on top and grind it out in the field, as we do, but grind your food, and then you can just throw it on your lawn. You don't even need a compost bin. If you do put it in the compost bin, the compost will work all year round, even in the winter, because it'll get hot. It'll heat up, and the volume is so low. If you use it in a biodigester, your garbage turns into methane, which you just saw, and liquid fertilizer in 24 hours. No waiting at all. No rats, no flies. And we know that if people were doing biodigestion and if they were grinding up their food in the Middle Ages, there would have been no what? What wouldn't have happened that killed no plague? The plague could have been completely avoided because the rats were only in the city looking for food waste. When it's ground up, they can't scent it. They can't have at it. It gets, de gets degraded too quickly. And when it's biogas, no animal even knows it's there. And they've had this technology for 10,000 years. The Persians had it. The Babylonians had it. Why didn't the Europeans use it? They ended up using it in the 1800s and then stopped when oil was discovered. But there would have been no plague. Think about it. Millions and millions of people who never would have had to die. No rats would have been in the city at all. 
That's when it gets scary, when you realize that this little project we're doing at Mercy College has the importance at a level of stopping war, stopping plague, stopping cholera, because if you put your toilet shit in these, the cholera bacteria die. 99% kill off for bacteria, typhoid, cholera, dysentery. They can't survive in these tanks. That means that all those children that died the week I was in Nigeria building these, 900 kids died that week because of a sewer break. And the former president of Nigeria said, we got to get this out to the people fast. And we tried. But the UN doesn't care. And the other relief agencies, they're like, oh, you can't make money at this. Because everybody can do this. It's that easy. So no cholera, no typhoid, no dysentery, no plague. What else? No indoor air pollution. You saw there's no smoke. There's no smell. Over 2 million women and children die every year because of indoor air pollution caused by charcoal and firewood. Hillary Clinton and Julia Roberts are on a campaign. Also, the Clinton Foundation is funding for clean cook stoves. They have these stoves that burn half the amount of charcoal or fruit firewood, which is good, and produce half the amount of smoke. So from 2 million women and children, we're down to what? A million still dying of that same disease. And they're putting millions of dollars into this. Nobody's ever put million dollars into doing this. And when we have these, how many women and children die from indoor air pollution? Okay. Zero. Isn't that weird? From two million to one million, and we bring it down to zero. That's why our project is so important on that level. When you don't cut down rainforest or cut down any trees to make charcoal or firewood, no deforestation, no habitat loss, no flooding, no erosion. All the forests in the world are being degraded by people now, the ones that are protected, desperately searching for firewood and charcoal. And when I went to Kenya and I went to Tanzania and I was at Jane Goodall's chimpanzee reserve, they're still cooking with charcoal in the chimpanzee reserve while they're trying to protect the chimps. And they're buying the charcoal from people who are cutting the forest down that they're trying to protect. So what? Really? This is how crazy the world is. But biogas, simple as it is, solves that problem too. It solves landfills, don't need any landfills. Solves trucking all that garbage away and paying so much of your tuition dollars goes to paying a company that comes here every day and hauls away the kitchen garbage you guys make in the cafeteria. That would be completely unnecessary. But we can't get Mercy College to agree to build a large digester. Even though we have the technology, my NGO has it. And they won't let us build even a pilot plant here because of the politics of it. There isn't enough support for it yet. But well, think of where your money's going. Those garbage trucks burning fossil fuels going beep, 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 beep. Every morning you wake up and, oh, my God, there's the garbage truck, right? Completely unnecessary. It's this kind of thinking that you have to get your hands on to totally believe. And then you become as whacked and, and pa passionate as I am. You're like, I can't live another year looking at these street lights, looking at the garbage trucks, looking at the landfill, knowing what I know now. That's what we hope to infect you with, is the type of thinking where you know enough, you're skeptical enough, and then you start advocating for what your heart tells you. Now, if you really like landfills, God bless you. Go fight for them. Go join the mafia. They like landfills. They're making plenty of money off them. And they try to shut things like this down. Hey, they take our revenue away? What? Somebody's got to go to the mafia and go, guys, there's a better way to make money. Oh, okay. I just have to money. I don't care. It's not like I like landfills. So this is a technology that I would, I will favor and champion with you guys. Hopefully, in your lifetime, you will see it. Happen. But it starts by getting one of these. If you don't have one, get one. Even if you just grind and let it go down the drain, it goes to the Yonkers Ludlow Wastewater Treatment Plant. We take a field trip there every year with my environmental science class. You're welcome to join. I'll announce on the Facebook group what it is. And we go there and they will show you how they turn your shit and your food waste into the methane that they run their generators on and they sell electricity back to the city. And they're making lots of money off of you because you're giving your shit away for free. <laughs> I don't give my shit away. It's my shit. You don't take it from me. <laughs> you gotta pay me for it. So put it in sink rate. If you want to give your shit away for free, at least stop paying the garbage trucks. Put it down your sink, grind it up, and they're happy to receive it. It triples the amount of uh, methane that they get. Any questions? Can we go inside? Yeah, we're freezing. Oh, I have some gas here we can burn. <laughs> no, we, we don't want to. We'll, we'll cook eggs with the gas. Yes, we can go inside. What did you do?